Hello and welcome. This is Betty with Betty Krause Art and thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be showing you how I put together these two pieces that are on paper and they are 8 by 10. These actually started off as one really large sheet and I decided to do a paint over. I cut them down into two smaller sizes. The paints we're going to be using today, the yellow is by Nova Color Paints. I'll have a link below for that and it's cadmium medium yellow and I'm also using Liquitex Heavy Body, and that is Prussian Blue Hue. And in the jar, I have um, uh, Nova Gesso. And then also the black one was Golden uh, Black Paint. Here I've got a China marker. It's a Sharpie China marker that I just peeled back. And like most of my pieces, I always like to start with mark making, whether I'm starting from a plain piece of paper with some just some gesso down on it or a paint over I'd like to start with my mark making so that was a white I used a black one and then a white one um, that pencil I just now used I believe was a Stabilo pencil I'm grabbing some different crayons just to make marks and I believe those are the woodies um, again I'll have a link down below in the show notes that will take you to my favorite art supplies and you'll see all of the ones that I use here so I'm starting off with my black paint. I always like to put down black paint first and I often put down a lot of it and that's because I really like it when my black paint kind of peeks through at the very end. And in order for that to happen, I need to put down quite a bit of it. And the majority of this, pretty much all of it actually will get covered up. So there's my gesso. I like to use uh, white as my gesso. So instead of washing my brush out, I just wipe it down and then I dip right into the white so I can put down some gray color. Now I'm washing out the brush and getting out my yellow. Again, it's cadmium medium yellow and that Prussian blue hue. Sometimes when I'm working inside my house, as opposed to my studio, I have my little small jars of travel size paints. It's just more convenient for me. So now I'm using a rigger and a rigger is basically a brush with a very long bristle on it or long bristles. And it's more meant for like some really fine line work. Um, I love using it so I can make circles and lines and um, just kind of um, making marks as opposed to using uh, colored pencils or anything like that. Now I've got a really small brush. I'm not sure what size that is. It's fairly small. Since I'm working on eight by 10 paper, um, you know, my palette is pretty small, my substrate. So I like using smaller brushes. If I'm working really large, then, you know, I definitely use much larger size brushes. So here I'm just blending some colors. I started with the blue and a little bit of white in there. And I'm going to spray this down. I just have a small travel size uh, water bottle and it's just filled with water turned it around so hopefully you can see the drifts that I'm creating. And I think that was actually with black. I think I had black up in that corner that I used. So I'm just going to dry this real quick, speed it up a bit so you don't have to wait through all the dry time. And this just helps me move forward a lot faster. All right, and I just grabbed a rag so I can use that. And that is Holly down there. I am pet sitting her and she came over just for a little bit of love for me. And then she's gonna go lie down again. She is really, really sweet. All right, so mixing, back to mixing. I had a little bit of black on my brush. I didn't wash it out. And so I mixed that with yellow. And of course, we're gonna get some green with that. One of the things I absolutely love to do in addition to creating art, is actually mixing colors. I just love seeing what kind of colors I can put together. 
So today we're actually working with a very limited palette. Um, if most of you guys follow my work, then you know that I love all color and I tend to use a lot of color in all my pieces. So this underpainting has quite a bit of uh, the warm colors in it. So I had decided that I would do some cooler colors for the final um, layers of it. And so I also wanted to kind of stick with a minimum palette. I've been trying to challenge myself to do this lately. And, um, and it's been really fun, a lot more fun than I thought it would be. So um, again, today I'm just using blue and yellow, black and white. So those are my um, limited, that's my limited palette. And it, it's amazing how many colors you can mix just using those two colors. So there you can see I put down kind of a darker green and now I added some white to that to make a little bit of a lighter green. And then I just wiped down my brush instead of washing it off. Part of my process is I like to use a very dry brush technique and that means not having a wet brush after having it washed. So if I do wash it in water, I tend to dry it off pretty well. So I'm just filling in as I go and kind of thinking about composition. On the one on your left that you're looking at, I put kind of a large element at the top there. So I'll be thinking about large elements, smaller elements, medium sized, uh, so that I have a lot of interest and variety on both pieces. So I'm just kind of filling in in between, trying to figure out what I want to save, what I want to cover up. So here's an, another large element I'm adding now to the one on the right. Getting out a little bit more black. Again, that was golden. It was a small sample sized bottle or, or one of the smaller bottles, I should say. Uh, very convenient to have when I'm inside doing work. My studio is great for large pieces when I'm standing and I'm working on the wall, but I don't have a place to sit down in there. And, and when I'm working small like this, I, I much prefer to sit down. So I'm actually working on my dining room table. I just put down some plastic. This is four mil plastic. And uh, you can, again, look at my favorite art supplies link and you'll find a link to the four mil plastic. This stuff is great. I reuse it over and over again. Um, but when I videotape, I tend to bring out kind of a semi cleaner sheet so that you don't see all those other colors that are on there. Uh, once the colors kind of dry and pile up a bit, you can peel them off. So you can see I've added a few larger elements to this piece over here. Start adding some interest that way. Since I'm not using any warm colors, I'm trying to save some of the warm colors that were on the original piece. So some of those oranges are gonna pop through on the final piece. I often don't work on two pieces simultaneously. So um, on this one, I decided to work on both of them uh, because they are smaller eight by tens. I usually, the smallest I tend to work on is a nine by 12. Um, and these two actually uh, were for a giveaway and they've already been sent. Uh, giveaway is for the folks who sign up for my email list each month. I do a giveaway, I draw a name and uh, send out an original piece of art to the lucky winner. And really working side by side like this goes much faster than trying to create two separate ones. Um, so I really enjoyed this process and again the limited palette I really enjoyed as well. So again, I'm just filling in as I go, thinking about composition. Here I'm adding white. Um, I really like 
making sure that I'm using the value scale entirely, meaning um, if you look at the value scale, the, the gray values, um, white being the whitest, the lightest color, and uh, 10 being blackest or black. And I like being able to use everything in between. So a lot of the a lot of the paints that come directly out of the tube or a jar tend to be mid-tone colors, like a five, six, or seven. Um, and they all kind of, you know, are, are similar. So I really like using, as you can tell, I use white a lot. And that's why I put a line of it down. Um, and that adds a lot of lightness to the colors. Um, sometimes I'll um, add a touch of black if I want to darken a color. So what I'm trying to do here is trying to use the entire gray scale. So I'm going with the white white, as you can see there, and then I've got the black or the Prussian blue hue being the darker colors. A really cool way to figure out if you're using all of the values or if you've got enough light and dark is to take a picture of it and then convert it to a black and white on your on your cell phone. There's a lot of um, uh, programs or not programs, just your your phone um, picture settings or options allows you to convert it into a black and white. Uh, so give that a try and see what you think about that. And you can look at you know is the white evenly dispersed? Do you have you know um, in, in several areas or is it all just in one area? Um, same for the dark, you know, is the dark all in one area or is it uh, dispersed around so that the eye kind of travels around. I switched back over to a rigger here, so I'm making some finer lines. Now I talked about with my brush, I like a, br a dry brush technique and that really allows a lot of the previous layers to show through. But when it comes to a rigger, um, you need to add water to it and that way it uh, flows a lot better. Um, if it's too dry, then you're going to have a hard time making those little tiny circles. Now, the other thing I learned to do with the rigger is kind of treat it as a brush and just fill in areas with it. And it's really cool because these pieces already have a lot of texture on them. So when I use kind of the side of the brush, it uh, kind of jumps certain areas and it allows the previous layers, layers to peek through. And I really like seeing that. So here again, I'm making really small circles with the white. They're actually here, I think they're actually dots as opposed to circles. So you can see here, I'm going right over that blue circle, that blue line in that in the upper blue circle. This is really important to do because if you don't go over uh, the, the mark making from previous, then everything becomes kind of one dimensional. It's all on one, um, one plane in a sense. But when you put marks over marks, then you create a lot more dimension. And that's what I'm doing here with these dots and putting them right over that blue circle that I have at the top. So when I start doing kind of the finer mark making, then I know I'm getting somewhat closer to the end. And this one probably went faster than they typically do because I already had several layers built up from, from the previous painting that I had put on there, which was a start to a painting, one that I never got around to finishing. So this part of the process, I tend to slow down a bit. You probably noticed earlier I was working 
fairly quickly, even though this video is at twice the speed, I still tend to work uh, pretty fast and try not to do too much thinking as I go through the process. One thing I love about acrylic paints is that if you don't like something, let it dry and paint right over it. And that's part of my process is if there's an area I don't like, I'm just going to wait and just add a different color on top, see if that color works better. Here I've created more of a gray, so I'm adding in some gray areas. Gray is a great neutral. I really like using it. Um, browns, tans, um, those are all great neutrals as well. And you'll find that if you use a neutral, it's going to make your other colors stand out even more. So as I kind of hesitate here, that tells me I'm trying to figure out what else I can do. Where else could I add some interest? This is the part where I really start to slow down and start, start thinking more. Um, so that beginning part where I was just putting down paint and kind of working the composition was going fairly quickly. And then as I slow down, it's coming to an end. So I decided that I needed more white. I wanted more light areas so that especially next to the, the darker blue really makes those two stand out a lot. Now I am dipping into the white but my white actually isn't a pure white because I haven't cleaned my brush so whatever color I had on my brush um, it is influencing uh, that white a bit so it's not a pure white. It's better not to have a pure white because then the white really isn't harmonized with the other colors. Uh, but when you add just a touch of a color to the white, then you create uh, harmony. So one of the reasons I love using plastic as my palette is, as you can see, I've got a lot of little pods of color all over the place. And there just now, I actually turned the brush around so that I can scratch into that wet area so that I can reveal some of the colors that were underneath. I think I put several different colors in that lower corner. I haven't quite found one that I really like. And there again, I'm scratching in with the back of my brush, making little circles. I'll have pictures at the very end so you'll see some of the detail shots. So I covered up that upper corner even more, but there is some of the previous darker color peeking through. Here I'm kind of offloading the side of my brush and that just leaves little marks here and there. I 
and maybe a little too much in that corner. So back to adding some white. I noticed I did wash my brush at that point and dried it off, but my white has a little bit of color to it already from those previous pods of color. So here I'm spraying it down, most likely because I wasn't too happy about all of that color. I'm going to hit it with the dryer just a little bit. And sometimes when I don't want the runs to the drips to show entirely, I will wipe them back, but just have a little bit of them showing here and there. So here I'm multitasking using my heating tool to dry while I fill in a little bit more. And again, going in, filling in. I can't seem to quite get that white area bright enough or, or not overly bright because I don't want it to be pure white. I want it to have a little bit of color in it. Mixed up some gray again. So here you can see I was picking up colors from the, from the different pods of colors that I had created before. A little bit of green, a little bit of blue, and there now I'm adding a little bit of yellow. I'm trying to get just the right color to add some, some more interest to that big circle up there. So a lot of times if I put down one circle, a lot of times I'll come back in and put another layer over it, but let some of that first layer of, of the circle peek through just a little bit. It just shows that there's layers underneath that or history underneath that. So I think a lot of you guys probably already know, unless you're really new to me, that my influence comes from fields of flowers. So when I am creating, I'm thinking about fields of flowers, um, not just thinking about them, but you know, how does that feel when I'm in a field of flowers, I'm surrounded by flowers. Um, a lot of the marks that I make represent flowers, but some of them, like the one that I'm working on right now at the very top, there's kind of these, um, what I call stepping stones, because I really love stepping stones as well. So those represent stepping stones. Um, as we get to mark making later, you'll see some of the lines that I make. Um, I'll make lines coming across and sometimes they're kind of like falling down like a like an old fence line uh, that's falling down because I really love those as well. So those I represent with um, mark making in my artwork. A little finger painting in there as well. All right, tapping of the finger means I'm not sure what else I can be doing here.
So again, I'm going to have links in the show notes below. So if you're looking at wanting to find out more information about the products I'm using, look for the show notes with that information. Here again, I'm just offloading the side of my brush so that I can add a few marks here and there. Trying to decide what to do with that blue right down that section there. I wasn't too crazy about. There we go. That works better. When I'm working on paper, when I'm starting a new piece, I put down a layer of gesso and that really helps keep the paper from curling up. You can see here, these are lying pretty flat. Uh, they tend to curl up just a tiny bit in the corners. Uh, so then I end up kind of bending them backwards a bit to flatten them out. But overall, they tend to stay pretty flat. And then if I do have an issue with any of them, Oh, there's Holly again, getting some love from me. Like I was saying, if I do have an issue with them curling up a bit too much, then I just put um, a large piece of paper, uh, like a cardboard over it, and then a heavy book, and let that sit overnight, and that really flattens it out. A little bit more line work with my rigor. The rigor is also listed in my favorite art supplies. And then I decided, no, nah, not really. So sometimes when I don't like what I've done, I will spray it down. And sometimes I'll wipe it down completely or other times I might just pat it a little bit and just let little remnants of it show through. Here I'm outlining those larger kind of, not quite circles, but elongated circles. So when I'm making circles with the rigor, sometimes I just do half, half the circle and then the other half. Sometimes it's hard to get a, a complete circle with um, just um, trying it once. So half circles tend to, to work better. So I'm trying to decide if I want those up there or not. Sometimes I'll put my hand over a section if I'm not sure about it to see, well, what would it look like if I if I took it out. But here I decided to just put another layer of color over it. I think if I took it out, it'd be way too empty in that area. So I'm trying to mix a gray again, washed out my brush. All right, we'll let that dry and then decide. And I decided 
kind of to make them disappear a little bit by using the same color as the background, but yet leaving some of those circles showing through. I think it was competing a little bit too much with that larger blue circle and that darker, dark grayish blue um, filled in circle. All right, I think I'm going to just about call it done here. Just bending back so I can see all of it. Actually, this is kind of like a uh, part of my process of procrastinating and trying to figure out what else to do. I'll curl back the edges. It's part of my thinking process. All right, so here I've wet down my brush and I'm just putting down um, some splatters of paint. Sometimes I'll do that, especially on my smaller pieces. I think it just adds one more layer of interest. Your brush needs to be pretty wet uh, to, to get those drops to come down. I'm dipping it dip the brush in water again. Here's a lighter version that I'm going to try. And hit that with the dryer. And usually at this point, if I'm done with the painting part, I'll let it sit overnight and then I come back the next day and do my mark making. Uh, but today I decided I'm going to dry it all really well uh, so that I can immediately show you the mark making process. And I forgot to speed up this part of the drying, drying part. Just about done here. Thank you for hanging in there this long and watching the video with me. If you're on Instagram, I'd love it if you followed me there. You can find me at betty.kraus.art. So here's close-ups. Again, I'm gonna have close-up pictures for you at the very end, but this is before we do the mark making. So I'm just gonna adjust the camera here for you real quick and get this positioned. And luckily I've got a new camera so I can actually see what you are seeing. So I was able to move that a bit so that it was completely within view for you. All right, so now we're in closer, and I'm going to start with a pencil here. I like using just a regular pencil, and I'm just going to make marks in various places. I like to do some scribbles as well, and then I'm going to take an eraser and just push back some of those scribble marks so that it's not one continuous line. I've got a blue pencil. Uh, let's see, this is probably it's a Prismacolor pencil. I love Prismacolor pencils. The, the quality of their colors are outstanding. So I made some circles, made some lines. And the great thing about any of the line making that I'm about to do, and here I'm actually filling in. So sometimes if I didn't put down enough paint um, and I wanna add a little bit more, or maybe a little bit of a, a, a slightly different color, I'll come in with my pencils and fill in. But what I was going to say before is that with any of this mark making, the cool thing is, is that I can just take an eraser and erase it if I don't like it. So what I've got in my hand now is a Stabilo Woody, and um, these are water soluble. So that means if you put any water on it, like varnish, it will move around. Uh, so I use a spray varnish at the end of all my pieces. And I do have a video for that, and I'll link that below. Um, 
but I love using uh, the the woody pencil pencils. Um, I also like using Neocolor 2 pencils. And the Neocolor 2 are also water soluble. Uh, Neocolor 1 is not, so uh, those are great to use. This pack here is actually the Neocolor 1. So when I put these down, they will stay in place. So all that white area I had before, I'm coming through and I'm just adding a little bit more white. And then with my finger, I'm kind of blending it in so that it looks more like it was painted on. Here I'm making some little circles. And I'm sticking with the same color palette that I've been using. So I'm using blues and whites and the regular pencil. I'll probably get out a green as well. But I'm not going to use, like, for example, I'm not going to use a red or a bright yellow or anything like that at this point because I'm trying to stick with my limited palette. Here, I'm just rubbing it out a bit. I didn't really like those lines there, those circles. So I'm erasing it back, but you can kind of see that they're still there. So I didn't want to erase it entirely. That's it. So I am signing it. I sign in pencil. So I'm good with that one. And let's switch over to the other one. So sometimes I do like to rub out the line a bit or erase it entirely. Again, if there's a line that you put down and you don't like it, then just erase it. And here I'm looking for some more colors. I didn't use green on the other one, so I'm trying to find some of the greens. And there's another blue. Those two greens seem to be pretty similar in color, so I'm switching over to blue. had a lot of white on the left side from your view of, of this painting. So I was trying to balance that with some white circles and some mark making in white on the other side. Here's a darker blue woody. All right, going back to that first one, trying to see what else I can do. Right, signing this one, calling it done. Let's 
So here they are side by side. They don't quite fit the frame properly. I'm going to turn them around for you so that you can see my view of them. And now I'll show you some close-ups of them. So I brought the camera in. You can see a little bit of shadow from my lighting above, but um, kind of see it a little bit better than what you're, you were able to see before. And then here's the other one. You can see some of the splatters in there. You see a lot more of the mark making. And the detailed pictures are going to show you more. So here's the first one. And then here's some details. I like that orange peeking through from that first layer. You can see a little pink peeking through as well. And then here's the second one. And some details. You can see those circles I scratched through and that first layer showed through. Lots of mark making throughout there. And here they are side by side. All right, so thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I should create more videos like it. Also subscribe to my channel by clicking on the bell below and you'll be notified of any new releases I have. Check out the show notes for useful links. And lastly, leave me a comment below and let me know if you picked up on any good tips that you're gonna try or just ask me a question. I'm happy to answer. Thanks again and have a fabulously creative day.